you can go like this and it'll hit Hey everybody, Shelby here, back for another video, and today, I'll be showing you how to make a sword in Roblox. So the first step you're going to want to do is go to View. It should be at the top, next to Test. Click it. And then go to Properties. It should be at the left. Click on both of them, Explorer and Properties, and then these will show up. This is what you're going to need for your programming and all that stuff. So you're going to go back to Home, next to Model, and then we're going to want to create a part so we can start modeling our sword. So click Part, next to Toolbox, click it, and then a part should appear in front of your camera. You can drag it around. Now we're going to start modeling the sword. You can scale it down by using the scale tool. You can move it like that. You can rotate it and stuff. So let's just make a sword real quick. It's a basic one. You can have as many parts as you want. Let's do it like this. It's a quick sword. You can also get different parts and shapes by clicking this arrow and click and clicking one of these. So I'm just gonna scale it down and put that right there. Now that you have your sword done, you can start turning it into a tool. So you're going to want to go to the main part that you want your character be to be holding. I'm going to click it, and then go to Explorer, right click, the, right click it, and then click Rename. Now you want to name it Handle. If you name it that, then it will work, and the tool will actually know what to hold. It will tell your character what to hold. So you can have it like that. And then you're going to want to weld the pieces together so they don't just fall apart. So we go to handle, right click handle, then click insert object. Go to weld constraint, and then go to the properties of it, which should be right here. Want to select it, then go to properties. Then you're going to want to set these parts so they weld to it and stick to it. So, go to part zero, you can put this to the handle of your tool, and then you can put part one of the other parts. So I can do that, and this part will stay to that. You're going to want to keep doing that. You can duplicate it by pressing Control D, or going and right-clicking it, and then clicking Duplicate. You can keep removing the part one and changing it to something else until all of the parts have been welded. Now that all the parts have been welded, you can turn it into a tool. So you can close that. And then you're going to want to find starter pack in Explore. Right click it. Insert object. Tool. Then it'll actually be able to be held. You can name it sword or whatever you or whatever you want, whatever you want, and then you can move every part inside of the tool. Now that you have your sword, you can click it. You can play, and then you can hold it. But make sure there's no weld at the at the end at this. In the handle because if there is a weld that looks like this you're going to want to delete it otherwise it'll be stuck to the base plate and you won't be able to move it and then you can click play and then you'll be able to hold it you can put away all the parts and then you got your sword 
But now, we're going to need a swinging animation. So it plays the animation when you swing it. So we're going to go to plugins. And then rig builder. You can click R15 or R6, depending on what your game has in it. We're going to do R15. And then block rig. Then you can rotate it and you get this. Now you're going to want to go to the animation editor. Click it. Then click the rig, which is this. And click create where animation editor is. And then you can start animating. Now, so it doesn't stop every single body part in the animation, you're going to want to make it so it ignores some parts. So we're going to make it ignore all of these. Everything except the right hand, the right arm. So the right arm should be free and you can move it. And everything else you shouldn't be able to move. And then you can start animating it. So you're at, on the first frame, you're going to want to make it like this. Because this is how your character is going to be holding it. And then you can start animating. I'm just going to make it go down like that. And then you can change the time of the animation. I'm going to change it to 0 0.25. And then when you go back to the start and then click play, it'll do that. And then you can go to edit right here. Set priority. And then, once you click that, you can change the priority. Since it is an action, we're going to want to click action. Then it'll play and will not be overwritten by other animations. Then if you want it looping, then you can do that, but we don't want our swinging animation to loop. Go to file, then go to export. This will show up. Then go to create new. You can name your swinging animation anything you want. I'm just going to name it swinging, swinging sword. Then you can click finish. If you want to add a description, you can add a description. I'm not going to. And click finish. And then you need the ID, so don't click OK yet. You're going to want to highlight that and get the ID. Copy that, and then and then you can click OK. You can close the animation editor by clicking that X, and then you have your animation in the animation ID. So now you can close the dummy and all that, and then we're gonna start coding our stuff. So insert a script by right-clicking the sword, and then clicking Insert Object. And then go to script. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it swing animation. And then insert, right click the script and explorer still. Then insert object. Then insert a bool value. This will be what you need to detect when it has a cooldown and when it doesn't. So right click the value and then rename it to cooldown. And then you have your cooldown, the swinging animation. Now we need the actual animation. So right click the script again, insert object, but this time animation. I'm just gonna name it swing. And then go to the, go to properties of it by selecting it and then go to properties. Then animation ID. You're going to want to paste your ID in it. If you just have the ID, it'll automatically do the rest. Like that. And then you have all the things you need inside the tool. Now you can start coding it. So we don't need this print. And now we can go, we can make our variables now. So local tool equals, because we're going to need a variable for the tool, equals script.parent. 
and then local cooldown equals script dot cooldown dot value. We're going to need these variables to find certain things a lot quicker, and it'll be more efficient. And then local animation equals script dot swing, and then or whatever you named your animation. And then we can start coding. So you can go like this. And then go tool dot activated, which is whenever the player clicks with the tool. Connect. And function. So it knows it's a function. And then another one of these. And then it should look like this. Then press enter while you're at the end of the line. And then you have your function. Now we're going to want to detect if there's a humanoid, just in case so it doesn't glitch out. So local humanoid will be a new variable inside of the function equals tool, so it goes to the tool, dot parent, which is the character, because it's inside of the character. Find first child, which is a humanoid. So it's going to look for the humanoid, which tells you if it is a character or not. So if humanoid, which will say if if the humanoid exists, if it exists, it will go inside of here. And then we can put inside of the if statement and cooldown, so we can have a cooldown, equals equals false. Now we can put the cooldown equals true, and then we can start scripting the tool and the animations. So now put local play anim or whatever you want your rail to be named equals humanoid colon load animation these and then put the animation which is this. Then you can put play anim that and then play. This will make the animation play. And then you're going to want to make it wait how long the animation lasted. So let's put 0 0.25 and then put play anim stop. So this will stop the animation. And then you can make it how long you want the character to wait until they can attack again. I'm going to put 0 0.5. Then cooldown equals false, so the cooldown ends and you can attack again. So you can go to the base plate. Home. And then click play. Now you have the tool. And you can attack with it. There's a cooldown, so you can't just spam it. But the one thing is, the one problem, you can't, it doesn't do any damage. And it collides. So you're going to want to click stop. And then, we're going to fix the collide problem. So you're going to want to hover over all these, like that, and select them all. And then turn off can collide. And then, the tool will not collide anymore. But now, we need to make the sword do damage. So put... So go inside the handle. Then right-click handle. Click script. And then insert a script. I'm gonna name it... Dam I'm gonna name it damage. And then you can delete the print. Now we're going to want to make it do damage. So script, this is the script, the parent, which is the handle, dot touched. So this will detect when it's touched. Then connect function, hit. This will be what it hit. It'll automatically make a variable for it. And then we're going to want to detect if it's a humanoid or not so it doesn't glitch and make errors everywhere. So local humanoid equals hit dot parent find first child which is a humanoid 
and then if humanoid like we did last time we can and now we're going to want to make it do damage so humanoid colon take damage get the capitals right and no space and then the parentheses and then how much damage you want it to do i'm going to put it at five now we're going to want to make it enable the damage so it doesn't always damage even when it's not swimming swinging so you can close the script and then you can disable it in the properties of the script so once it's disabled and has the check right there you can go back to the swinging script and then we're going to want to undisable it using this script so after this before just before the wait you can put tool dot handle dot damage or whatever you named your script dot disable equals false so it won't be disabled anymore and then after this stops you can put tool dot handle dot damage dot disabled equals true this is like the same thing right there but it actually disables it instead of undisabling it and then now it'll do damage you'll have correct collision and it'll work so you can go back to base plate click play you can equip your sword it won't do any damage right now but once you swing it'll do damage it might be a little bit glitchy but it still does damage If you want an accurate damage hitbox, you can go to stop and then change it to the tip of the sword, which is the tip right there. So it in my in my tool is named a wedge, so it's like that. And then you can put it back in starter pack once you've seen which part it is. You can move the damage script into the part. You can name it damaging, and then we're going to want to um, change the swing animation script. Then go to we're gonna remove this line, the tool dot damaging whatever you named your part dot damage dot disabled equals false. It's going to do the same thing, but it's going to be inside of that part we put it in. So I think go back to base plate, click play, and then it will have a more accurate hitbox. So instead of having to go up close up like this, you can go like this, and it'll hit. And that's how you make a working sword in Roblox. Make sure to slap that like button and punch that subscribe button. Peace.